Hey guys, so everyone here, and in this video, I'm going to show you guys a pretty full fail safe guide on how to draw graffiti for uh, beginners or people who really don't know where to start. I don't think I'm the best, I don't think I'm like amazing, but I do think I'm good enough to help people who help people get better. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Alright, so first off, you're going to need these things a pencil, it doesn't have to be mechanical, it just has to have a decent eraser. Um, and this one's 0.5 in the video. Next off we have, it's just a simple black pen. Uh, a thin point sharpie would be better even, but that's what I have. I also have a fat sharpie, a uh, chisel point, that's important for later. Different color pencils, like different thickness pencils are helpful. And a ruler will help you out. It's not, it's okay to use a ruler when you're drawing graffiti guys. You don't have to do it all freehand. So starting off, this is a technique that I like to use. I do a tag, and when I do this, it's really important that I hold the marker sideways, and I never let the nib rotate, so that it gives this letter, the letters, a cool and interesting kind of feel to them. And so basically, you just tag out the word you want to do, then you lay your paper over it, and you trace around it so that you get letters with fill. Uh, this part I sped up right here. But basically you're just tracing around your tag and making it kind of into an outline. And this, th no, this is not how I come up with all my letters. I rarely use this technique, but I feel it's a good way to help people who are starting out, like help with their letter forms and stuff like that. So this part of the video is sped up, and... You can see that I'm just tracing around the letters right now. And right about now, what I'm doing is I'm erasing parts of the letters and I'm adding connections between these letters so that it gives it flow and just makes the piece look nicer. And it makes it look more complex, but it also still keeps true to the letters because that's what she started with, so it's not going to go too crazy and you're not going to be able to read it. And how you find the connections is, I mean, usually using the bottoms, like the ends of the letters, connecting to them, like the ones next to them. But it doesn't have to be the ones next to them. It can be the ones to the beside them. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I, it's good to have some that overlap and some that go behind to mix it up. As I said before, this pen kind of sucks. I just didn't have a fine point charm piece on me. And if you do have one, that's better. This is just some like Bic pen that kind of sucks. But all right, so now. This is what it looked like after that. See that note the connections between the T and the R and stuff like that. Right here, I'm just showing the basic 3D that you can do, and it's a good idea if this is one of your first pieces or you're just starting out. It's a good idea to practice on different things than other than just going straight to your piece because you don't want to mess it up and have to start all over. So basically, I just showed the straight down 3D. And this one's to the left or to the right. I don't know. The video's going to be flipped around, so don't call me a retard. I honestly can't tell you. But I'm shading it in here just to show you. Um, it's not shaded in all the way just for time purposes. But These are the pretty basic. You can do 3D that goes up, but it's not really used that much. And I've never really seen it done before, so I wouldn't recommend doing it. I didn't show it in the video. After this is this next 3D gets kind of more confusing if you've never seen it before. But basically, is you just take a point in the center of the letter, which I'm showing now, and you just draw lines to the center of the letter from basically all the edges. And when that goes for all the 3D, you go out from the edges of the letters 
and you have to make sure to keep your length proportional and your yeah you don't want to make it look like funky and like have it look all messed up they're not the same size and stuff the same width and stuff this 3d is good for like doing it quickly because you can hide it kind of behind the letters and it just kind of like makes the piece look like it's coming out from the center and it gives it a nice quality and that is what I use for in this video I do that to the center take my pencil and mark it I wouldn't make it that dark if you, but I'm doing it for the video just so you guys can see it and I sped up this part and I use the ruler I know some people are against using a ruler in graffiti they say it's like cheating but you're not you're just sketching out so you can use any tools that you need um, excluding copying other people's letters and stuff like that no copying but you can use rulers you can use things to draw help you draw circles I mean I'm it's it's okay if you're just starting out eventually your hand will get steadier and you'll be able to draw it but it's really handy to have a ruler and be able to draw things like that because you can just draw, draw the lines nicer and straighter so that's what it looked like after the 3D to the center and you could stop there most people some people would stop after shading in the 3D black you don't have to shade it in black you could shade it in other colors but mainly it's most people do it black so that's what I'd recommend if you're just starting out just stick with the black and you could stop after you're done filling that in but I wouldn't and when you do it you could fill it in with the big marker it takes less time but I'd go back after with the smaller video smaller marker as you'll see me do and touch it up because the big marker really can get those narrow lines and you don't wanna just ruin your letters by rushing you wanna take your time these pieces may not you're not gonna be done in like 15 minutes they're gonna take some time they're gonna take effort if you want them to look nice and if you do follow this video and you do all the things in the video I'm guaranteeing that you're gonna be able to make something that looks pretty nice as you see I'm just going back with my black pen fixing stuff I'm sorry if this commentary gets kind of repetitive at some parts and if you already know all this stuff then feel free to mute the video but for a lot of people I know that a bunch of people just put out videos on YouTube on how to do graffiti and they're not even about how to's and they don't talk so it's a lot harder to follow what they're doing so this is about this is the step you want to erase your pencil marks because there's no point doing it before because you can just cover them up with the marker but now that you're gonna fill in your letters with color you're gonna want to erase them so that you, they get trapped behind there and can't see it alright so this is what it looked like after that Although I'm seeing that the quality is pretty bad but it might fix itself after it renders I'm not sure so I pick out these colors the blue and the purple for the fill uh, I just do a really simple fill where I fill like pretty much like a fourth like a two-thirds of a letter and then go to the next color and do like two-thirds of the next letter I mean it's pretty simple stuff there's a bunch of different ways you can fill a letter um, just by looking at different different uh, drawings of graffiti you can learn different ways you can do fills uh, I wasn't gonna sit there and demonstrate all of them because I can't do all of them uh, I don't know all of them it's best you just look it up for yourself and stuff like that but I know a bunch of people oh that say style doesn't need color and that means that if your letters are good enough then they're good enough in black and white but the thing is if you're watching a how-to draw graffiti video your letters probably aren't good enough so color can really help make your piece stand out more and be brighter and look a lot nicer and as for the markers I'm using a touch twin marker I have a review of it on my channel and I'm using a Prismacolor I don't have a review of that because there's so many others up on YouTube you could go look those up if you wanted one um, I find that the touch markers are a little bit nicer but the Prismas blend more and have more colors so 
if you're like gonna get a huge set and get like all the shades and stuff the prisms have more shades but the touch markers are I think better um, individually but they don't blend as well and guys when you see this don't don't be like oh his letters suck he can't draw his toy because this is just a tutorial I'm actually showing how like exact steps on how to do it and if you follow these steps anybody can really do it and that's why I try to break it down into a process that really anybody could do and you really don't need all that much skill just patience and I guess a steady hand not really even but because you got a ruler I mean, it'd take longer if you did everything with that but anyways you really really anyone can do this I think uh, my eight-year-old brother can uh, so I'm pretty sure anybody can do it just about wrapping up pretty soon now and we're gonna move on to the next step which is highlights and I have a special thing for you that I want to tell you guys about in just a second when this is done alright now I'm just gonna go back around and touch it up with no I'm not never mind <laughs> alright so this is what it looked like after that pretty simple fill and what I have here is it just a white white out marker or pen whatever you want to call it and basically you squeeze and push the tip down and white out comes out so I just tested it over there because usually like a big little bit comes out a big little bit yeah speaking fail anyway so a lot of it comes out and you don't want to just do that on your piece and have it come go everywhere so it's better to test it on a separate sheet of paper but I just tested it right there for the sake of time and the thing with highlights is you do it only on one side of a letter you either can pick like the right or the left you can do like a fuzzy highlight this one I did more of a like a slick clean highlight um, I chose to do it on the I think you guys are going to be seeing it as the right side. I'm not sure. I see it as the left side. Again, don't call me retarded. I'm going to flip the video so I can't tell. But you just, I would really recommend getting one of these pens because I had a deco color white and that's just a paint marker and I had like the medium nib, I think, and it's way too big to do any of this like detail stuff with the highlights. So I'd recommend getting one of these because it can really cover over anything. It covers the best over like all the paint markers I've used. Um, I think Molotov One for Alls might be better, but I'm not sure. I haven't used them. I want to though. They look pretty nice. After that, you probably want to go around and fix up your edges with uh, a black fine liner like that because after that and the color there's probably a little faded or like your color has gone out of it a bit same with your highlights so you just want to go back and re-darken those lines make them bolder again sorry if this is boring guys but it's more for informational so just bear with me Alright, so I'm just showing it to you now. It's Bic Whiteout Pen. I got it at CVS. You can get them anywhere. Alright, so I noticed that I did miss. If you were look carefully at the A there, you saw that I missed a little bit of highlight there. But I went back and fixed that. So it's all good. Right now, I'm showing you outline. And on these, again, I'm just demonstrating the two types of outline, really. Uh, there's a flush outline, which right up against the letters and 3D. Or you can do a little with a little bit of white space in between the letters and the outline. I usually just go with the flush because it's cleaner and nicer and it's a lot 
less e like the spacing when you do the space with the white it's a lot easier to mess it up because the space is going to get different like the space between the letters and it's going to look weird here I'm showing you that on your outline with the same outline color you can add things like bubbles off of the letters and drips but usually when people do those when they're starting out they overdo them so if you're starting out I really recommend that you don't use drips or the dots because it's just going to take away from your letters and you're, you're probably going to put just way too many of them and it's just gonna, like you're going to like do it and be like oh I wish I didn't do that after you did it so I recommend staying away from those in this piece I do not use any drips or bubbles I just do the flush outline as for the outline color you, it usually wants to be something pretty bright or if your whole piece is bright, I guess something dark, something that contrasts your letters. Uh, but try and keep it in the color scheme. Not saying that it has to be another shade of blue like I used. Like a yellow would be good, or an orange even. Just something that like is like like is a they complement each other. If they're complementary colors, then you can use them. But I wouldn't want to use like a a brown. That'd just be weird. But I mean, you could. I could have used an orange. That would look pretty cool. Or yellow. Right here, I'm showing you guys a, how you can make a background for your piece. Um, yeah, I'm wearing a glove because that spray paint on the cap is annoying and it's hard to get off. Basically, I'm just going to the corner and I'm doing flares with the spray. It's just crappy cry, crappy Krylon paint. No, it's rust only. Never mind. But I'm just doing little flares out from the, that one corner. Doing a couple little splats on the right there. And, uh... Yeah. You, this, you, I'm just using black because I'm not going to get crazy with any colors or anything. Just to be simple for you guys. I know... Most, almost everybody has black spray paint at their house. Right here's a stencil that I'm doing. I had this stencil and I just threw it on there. Stencils are hard to make. They're annoying to cut out, but it looked cool, so I put it on there. That's what it looked like after that. Right here, I'm showing you cutting it out. And this is I'm basically just cutting it out with scissors and pretty much everybody has scissors I'm guessing basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tape it on to the piece and you could skip all these steps and just do the background first and then do the piece onto it like if you have paint markers but I have some but they're not that good and this way it just looks nicer and almost everybody can do it because not everybody has those paint markers that are expensive. If you're getting more into it, I would recommend, though, getting nicer markers. Uh, the Prisma colors are nice. They're, I think they're like $3. They're pretty inexpensive. I mean, they're expensive, but however you want to get them, whatever. You know what I mean. You can't caught that. But, uh, so basically, there's, there it is cut out. And... I'm just going to take a thing of tape. First you want to like kind of figure out where you're going to position it. I had known I was going to put it in that corner and where the flares are coming out of. And the piece that I'm putting on there should have been bigger. It would have looked nicer if the letters, it was just a bigger piece. But, you know, just for tutorial sake, I wasn't going to worry too much about it. So that's just normal tape. doesn't have to be clear. I'm just taking it, and I'm not going to tape over it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it off and roll it up long ways so that it's sticky on all sides. And just put it on the back of my piece. And stick it on there. If you guys have seen my videos before and you're watching this, you're probably like, 
wondering about the mic quality. I bet it sounds a lot better because I actually plugged in my mic this time instead of just using a laptop mic. Laptop mic. Anyways, that was just random, but I thought I'd throw it in there for you guys that are wondering that. So I'm, I pushed it down some, and I didn't push it down that much because I kind of made it look like it was elevated. Can't really see it with the scan, but anyways. Now the last step is tags. Now I suggest going on a separate sheet of paper and practicing your tags before you go and do it on your piece. Again, use the chisel tip marker and try not. I I don't rotate the nib at all and get that same effect with the letters. Um, you guys don't know how many times I've done a piece and then done a tag that's just completely ruined it because it was just like hideous and I just went out there and did it. So I really recommend practicing them first before you just go out and do it. Now on this piece, I had already had the stencil that said silver one at the top, so I didn't place any tags on it. I just thought it, they'd be overkill, but definitely if you don't have a stencil, place a little tag in there on the corner or at the top or near the letters, whatever, whatever where you really want to put it. If you don't really have a tag, I mean, it's pretty simple. If you just even write out the letters and don't rotate the nib, it'll look pretty decent. Uh, you can add a halo. You can put the date. But anyway, that's the fi finished product, guys. Uh, I hope you guys liked liked it. And comment, rate, and subscribe. Bye.